In this lecture, we will discuss about the circular queue. In the last lecture, we have seen that uh, uh, when Q has Q dot rear has reached to the maximum position, and uh, further insertion will not be possible. But in the case the Q does not have any element, and uh, or the elements which have come in the Q have been deleted, then front will, front has reached to the seven and rear was at six position. It has zero element, but further insertion will not be possible even if we have the positions blank here or the vacant positions here. So since Q has reached to the maximum position, the further insertions are not possible. So we can overcome that by using the circular queue. <coughs> now suppose there is a buffer. And in this buffer, let's say mark the positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say <clears throat> the rear and the front both have been initialized to the last position. Now suppose you have to insert an element. So for insertion of an element, you simply follow rear plus 1 mod size so size of this is 6 fine so for insertion you are following this this rule rear plus 1 mod 6 so what will be this value rear plus 1 mod 6 this will be 7 mod 6 and 7 mod 6 will give you 1 so you can insert an item here but there are some limitations of this you will this formula might fail somewhere because of that, <clears throat> we are actually taking the these uh, positions at not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say we are taking it to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Fine. So, for this, let's say last position is 5. So, 5 plus 1 mod 6, which is 6 mod 6. This gives us 0. So, the rear will come here and then you can insert an item let's say x here next time again let's say you have to insert an element so rear is updated by 1 so rear is at 0 plus 1 mod 6 this is 1 mod 6 which will give you 1 value so you can insert an item here let's again you have to insert an element so it is updated by 1 oh, 1 plus 1 mod 6 which is giving us 2 so you can insert an item z here at two position. So this way you can see that whenever you have to insert an item, <coughs> a rear is updated by one by the formula rear plus one mod size. Fine. Now suppose you have to remove an element. So the removal process is also same. For removing an element, you update this front. How will you update this front? Rear plus one, sorry, front plus one mod size. So front plus one mod size is the formula for updating this front. So front is at five plus one mod size means it is six mod six, which is zero. So now uh, at the zero position, you can remove an element. So front comes here, and you can remove an element. Now suppose you have to insert an element, sorry, remove an element again. So 0 plus 1 mod 6, front was at 0 plus 1 mod 6, this gives you 1. Front is updated here and you can remove an element. Again, let's say you have to remove an element. So 1 plus 1 mod 6, front is at 1 position, plus 1 mod 6, this gives you 2. So you can remove the element from position number 2. Fine. After the removal of this element, you can see that rear and front both are at the same position and this queue is empty, it does not have any element. Initially also, rear and front both were at the maximum position that was at the last position and the queue was empty. Fine. So now let us write the operations. The first operation that we are writing is the initialization. So let's say we are initializing a circular queue. 
let's say CQ is the circular cube and uh, the rear of the circular cube and front of the circular cube both are initialized at the maximum position so let's say max Q is a position which is telling us the size of the cube Fine. max Q is the in last index so we have initialized both at the last position front and rear Similarly, we can design another operation which is the empty operation. Empty means we just have to check if the given Q is empty or not. So let's say we have a function empty and in this empty we will check if the Q is empty. It can be checked by seeing if front and rear are equal. If front and rear positions are same, this Q will be empty. So if q dot front is equals to q dot rear, obviously this q is empty. So since empty is a boolean value function, it will return true in the case where front and rear are at the same position. Otherwise it will return false indicating that q is not empty, it can have some elements in the q. So this is the algorithm for empty. Now let us write the <coughs> DQ operation. DQ means the deletion operation. So DQ from a circular Q. DQ operation from the circular Q. So from the circular queue for the deletion, we update the front by one. So how the front is updated? Front is updated by the formula CQ dot front is equal to CQ dot front plus one and mod size. And then you save the element of the front position in some let's say X variable so from the buffer from front position you are taking the item in some x variable and then you are uh, returning this x variable fine now before the uh, removal you should first check if the queue is empty or not if the queue is empty the removal will not be possible so let's first check the empty condition so if my circular queue is empty then the removal will not be possible so if empty CQ if empty QP, if CQ is true in that case we will write a condition that Q underflows we are trying to remove an element from a queue which is empty so it's an erroneous condition so we will prefer to exit so if six circular queue is empty removal will not be possible and we will prefer to exit in case this condition is true queue underflows and we will not attempt to remove an element but otherwise we will remove the element by this procedure so this is the algorithm for removal Now try to understand this NQ operation or the insertion operation. Suppose we have this queue and this queue we have tried to insert some elements. Let's say front and rear are at this position. We have inserted the element first by updating this rear. Again 
again again again and let's try to remove some elements remove the element again remove the element again so front is at this position <coughs> let's try to insert more elements updated by one where is here again try to insert where comes here again try to insert the element where comes here so now at this point of time where is at this position let's mark the index 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so rear is at one index and front is at two index and if you try to insert more elements here rear will be updated and rear will come at two position if we insert the element z here then rear and front both will come at the same position and we have seen earlier that if the rear and front are equal this is the condition of empty so we cannot allow this to happen so in the insertion process if by updating rear it becomes equal to the front we cannot allow this to happen it means if by updation of rear it becomes equal to the front it is actually the condition of full queue and we cannot allow this insertions to happen try to understand it again if by updating rear it becomes equal to the front if we allow this to happen the next time we'll when we will check this queue we uh, we will observe that the queue is empty fine but it is not it's it actually has maximum elements in the queue fine it has the queue is full so we cannot allow this to happen so for if while insertion uh, by updating rear if it becomes equal to the front we will not allow that insertion to take place so that will be the condition of overflow actually the queue is already full and you are trying to insert the element otherwise you can uh, in, in the other sense you can see that if this queue size is declared as n this position will always remain vacant it means you will have n minus 1 element at mass in the queue we cannot allow this insertion to take place so one position will remain vacant always so let's write the nq operation in the nq a cq or circular queue is given and you're first checking the overflow condition so how will you check the overflow condition if cq dot rare plus one mod size you have computed this and if this becomes equal to cq dot front if by updating the rare it becomes equal to the front then we you, you will not allow this insertion to take place so you will write that this q overflows in case q overflows you will prefer to exit if by updating the rail if it becomes equal to the front you will not thus allow, allow this to happen so here you can see that you have just done it mathematically but you have not equated it with the rail you have not updated the rail you have just checked if the rail is equal to, if by updating rail it becomes equal to the front fine so in case this condition is true you will not allow this insertion to take place but otherwise you will allow the insertion to take place so for allowing the insertion to take place you will update the rear so cq dot rear is equals to cq dot rear plus one mod size you are now allowing the insertion to take place in the buffer at the rear position insert the element x suppose the 
x parameter is also given in the nq fine so if uh, by updating rear it becomes equal to the front then you will not allow that inversion to take place but otherwise you will update the rear and you will insert an item at the rear position this is an algorithm so let me write a keyword algorithm here begin here and and end here thank you